Hello, this is Anna Galletly, and we're going to go over Unit 7 now, where we're going to do a brief overview and of the uh, fetal circulation, and then also a little bit on the lymphatic system. All right, so note slides. We always have them. You need to memorize them. All right, so here you've got your functions. You've got the parts of the structures that you need to know, like the umbilical arteries and the vein, which go through the umbilical cord and what it does it bypasses the immature li liver via the ductus venosus and then on the pulmonary circuit we've got two structures so this is the hepatic circuit all right pulmonary circuit we've got two structures foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus you need to know the adult name okay and you need to know the fetal name and you need to know what it does in the fetus. So memorize that so you can answer it on the quiz. You will definitely have questions on this on the quiz in the midterm. All right, so here we've got a nice slide where it basically gives you both the fetal name and the postnatal name, or basically what I'm calling the adult or child form, okay? After the fetus takes its first breath when it's born, so it's a neonate, that changes the pressure in its thoracic cavity and that caught in the abdominal cavity and that basically causes all of these to collapse snap shut and and basically they start to take their adult form and turn into scar tissue okay so let's look at first you've got your placenta right here okay now remember arteries return veins leave okay so i have my uh, umbilical vein right here in red okay so this is my umbilical vein this gets confusing so please be clear on what you're looking at okay now coming off of the um Um, iliac arteries we have the two umbilical veins so you can see them coming this way okay um, and they're basically going to form little branches right here which then are going to be your blue umbilical arteries which are going towards the placenta so they're leaving the baby's heart and going towards the placenta where you're going to do exchange in the placenta between the maternal blood and the fetal blood okay now the umbilical vein, which is in red, but we're going to color it blue, that is bringing oxygenated, nutrient-rich blood up here. Now, normally, this stuff would go through the hepatic portal system, but we're going to bypass that with the ductus venosus, okay? So this is just a tube which allows this umbilical um, blood to bypass the liver and not waste time in it and then it basically dumps directly into the inferior vena cava going into the right atrium and then into the right ventricle and then out through the pulmonary trunk now for bypass structures on the pulmonary circuit all right so first of all you have your foramen ovale okay and this is going to be a hole that goes between the right and left atria allowing the blood to directly move from the pulmonary whoops pulmonary circuit to the systemic circuit bypassing going through the lungs now it's doing that but a little bit is going to go into here all right and then it's going to go out here and go into the pulmonary trunk now when it does that um, it's got another opportunity to bypass there's the ductus arteriosus okay and that allows the blood to bypass the pulmonary arteries and go directly into the aorta because it's oxygenated. So then it can automatically go into the aorta and go out to the body. Little bit does go through and go to the lungs, which is important because it basically exercises the lungs and uh, prevents those vessels inside the lungs from atrophying, okay? So ductus venosus allows you to bypass the liver foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus allow you to bypass the pulmonary circuit of the heart okay next slide 
All right, so right here, we're just looking at what you would see in an adult model. So you see the ligamentum arteriosum, which is basically gonna be a little bit of scar tissue. Next slide. All right, let's look at the lymphatic system. So you've got your purposes right here, your functions, transport lymph, remove foreign pathogens, okay? Now, we're gonna divide the stuff up into lymphatic vessels versus lymphatic tissue and organs. So these are all your lymphatic vessels. Um, what I want you to know are lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels. You've got trunks, I'm not too worried about you remembering those. You've got your cisterna chile, which goes into the thoracic duct, which goes into the subclavian, the left subclavian vein. And then you've got your right lymphatic duct, which goes into the right subclavian vein. You should be able to identify those all on models, okay? Now, primary lymphoid organs are, or structures are places where you actually can uh, produce cells, okay? Produce and train cells. So the red bone marrow is one and the thymus is another. Secondary is gonna be where you aren't necessarily making cells. Instead, what you do is you take cells that have already become immunocompetent or are nonspecific. So um, they're part of the innate immune function. And those cells are gonna hang out in those locations and do their jobs. So the tonsils, the lymph nodes, the spleen, uh, malt tissue, okay? Those areas are considered secondary lymphoid organs. All right, next slide. All right, we've got our basic note slide, all right, telling you what's going on. This is showing you drainage for the lymphatic vessels that I actually care that you know about, okay? All right, so all of the little lymphatic trunks get their own little names, and I don't care about that, okay? What I want you to know is you've got lymphatic vessels that are draining the intestines. They're full of a fatty lymph called chile, okay? They all drain and they drain into like a major collecting point. So it creates a swelling that we call the cisterna chile. So a cistern for chile, okay? The cisterna chile initially swells and then it narrows back down and where it narrows, we call it the thoracic duct. This runs alongside the aorta and inferior vena cava all the way up where it's eventually going to drain into the left, oops, the left subclavian vein. So this is draining ultimately all the lymph of your legs, your pelvic cavity, your abdominal cavity, part of your thoracic cavity and the left side of your body is also going to eventually drain into that structure and then back into the lymph, um, the, the venous blood supply. So all lymph ultimately comes from blood plasma that went into the spaces between cells and became interstitial fluid. So basically the pathway is blood plasma, interstitial fluid, lymph, and it just creates this lovely little circle, all right, where it's circulating. The right lymphatic duct, all right, I want you to know that one. That one is draining into the right subclavian vein and it's draining the right side of the body and the head. Okay? All right, next slide. All right, looking at lymphatic capillaries, what I want you to know is that these are embedded with blood capillaries, okay? So remember, the blood is in the capillaries and there's plasma. That plasma is going to be leaving the capillaries and going out and becoming interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid needs to be drained. And as we get older, you might notice in the mornings your hands or feet are kind of swollen, and that's because you haven't been draining that interstitial fluid up into your lymphatic capillaries uh, very effectively while you were sleeping, okay? So we need to drain all of that. Now, as this stuff begins to build up, it creates pressure. That pressure pulls on the edges of your capillary. Now you'll notice I've got these little anchoring filaments. As you pull, that holds these little sides there 
and that pulls these flaps open and because the pressure is lower inside the capillary it sucks the interstitial fluid into the lymphatic vessel where it becomes lymph but I just totally misspelled that okay all right next slide all right these are the lymphoid organs and areas I want you to memorize okay next slide all right locations the thymus if you go and start tapping your sternum right now so I'm tapping mine you can hear my voice shaking as I tap it okay if I took my sternum off all right so here's the sternum actually it goes down more like that okay if you take that off you will find the thymus right underneath okay the top part okay um, so um, that's where it is um, but it begins to atrophy at puberty so often by the time you're in your 40s or 50s there's almost nothing left and by the time you're 70 or 80 it's gonna be gone all right next slide all right this slide is just showing you where you've got the different tonsils up in there you've got lymph nodes in your neck axilla inguinal region all along the abdominal aorta we've got them other places but those are the major regions because of the way you have the potential for introducing pathogens in those areas okay embedded within the intestines you have what we call malt all right mucosa associated lymphatic tissue the most important malt to remember are the pyres patches which we'll also be looking at again with the digestive system you should be able to identify those all right so in your um, histology in your APR your practice atlas your book you've got various pictures for lymph node histology I want you to be able to basically identify that you're seeing a lymph node okay so over here I've got the different parts labeled where you can see the cortex you can see the medulla you can see how it's separated into these um, nodules okay where you've basically got these little triangular areas the germinal center is in the middle um, basically you've got afferent vessels coming in notice I've got one two so one two three four five afferent vessels but I only have one efferent vessel that basically means that you're gonna have higher pressure within the lymph node which is basically helping with the cleaning now in the germinal centers you're gonna have a nice concentration of B cells you're also going to set to have so you've got B cells T cells natural killer cells you've got macrophages those are the dominant cells that you're gonna find in that lymph node now if we come over here and we look at the um, photomicrograph what you should notice at the lower magnification is that you can see the the way that it's doing this kind of um, 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 region off to the side where you're basically going to have these afferent vessels coming in you can see an area where the staining is different that's going to be the germinal region where you've got lots of B cells and then where you've got more macrophages and other types of lymphocytes it's going to stain darker okay the medulla is going to look a little different because you've got a lot of drainage vessels all right so next slide all right so with the tonsils again I want you to be able to identify that you're looking at a tonsil so you got a lymph node distinguish it from a tonsil okay and what you'll see is the tonsil is a little is quite a bit bigger than the lymph node structurally it's pretty similar with these little things off to the edges with the germinal center in the middle and then uh, other uh, darker staining structures around the edges all right, so that was the last of the slides for the lymphatic system. So we're going to stop there, and um, you can go on to working on your unit.